Welcome back everybody, it's Miles. I thought today would be a great day to talk about how much money I made in sponsors in my Bellator debut against Benson Henderson. Now this fight was September 27th, 2019 and we scrapped and threw down in Dublin, Ireland, which was awesome because I've actually never been there before. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. We talk a lot about fighting and finance here. I fought 14 times in the UFC. I started training when I was 13 years old and I had my first mixed martial arts fight when I was 15. I was actually still in high school. And from there, I just kept fighting, training, fighting, and training. And I eventually became a professional when I was 19, and I signed with the UFC when I was 22 years old. And since then, it's just been history. I've been doing the same thing. I fight, I train, I fight, I save all my money, buy a bunch of real estate, and smash thumbs up buttons and subscribe buttons. Now, this fight with Benson Henderson was huge for me because, I mean, Benson's a former UFC champion. He's a number one contender in Bellator. And he's just a big, big name when it comes to the MMA game. Anybody that's been around the game for a little bit knows Benson Henderson, and he's highly respected. So it was a huge challenge for me, and it was something I was super excited for. Now, Bellator is a top-tier organization. You have UFC, and to me, you have Bellator. There's other organizations coming up that fighters can go to, but primarily the most dominant one is UFC, and then next up is Bellator, which they're both top organizations with high-class athletes, great fighters, and a great business people behind them. Guys like Dana White and Scott Coker, some of the best promoters out there, and just truly are keeping MMA on the forefront, pushing it, making it bigger, making more opportunities for fighters, journalists, YouTubers, all anybody that's involved in it, they're making big opportunities for them. Back in the day, it was like the wild, wild west with sponsors. In the beginning, when it came to, for example, a fight in Bellator or the UFC, Anybody and, and everybody could come to a fighter, let's say for myself example, a clothing company called J-List. This is a true story. They could come to me, they're starting up, and what they would do is say, Miles, we're going to throw you a couple thousand dollars if you put your logo on your shorts when you step into the cage and fight in the UFC, for example. Now, what that gives them is marketing, exposure. I mean, UFC has a platform, depending on which platform you're looking at. They've been on FX, they've been on, they're on ESPN now, pay-per-views, um, they've been on the old Spike. And same thing with Bellator. Bellator is on CBS now, they've been on Paramount, DAZN. So that's what it's all about when it comes for sponsors. They're looking for angles and places to advertise. And what better way than to get behind a fighter that's going to be in front of a camera, in front of hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people for maybe 5, 10, 15, 25 minutes, depending on how long the fight is and, and how it goes. Now let's go back to this example of a company called J-List. This was basically a clothing company that was starting up. They want to throw some money and basically that's it. They give the money to the fighter, the fighter wears their logo on their shorts, goes out their fights, and everybody is happy, everybody wins. There's no middleman, you don't have to go through the UFC, you know, get anything approved, anything like that. Then came in what was called a sponsorship tax to the UFC. Now this meant that you had to pay for clothing companies, you had to pay the UFC a rate around $50,000 if you wanted to get approved to be able to wear your clothing company in the octagon. So this is when uh, certain companies like Tap Out was there, um, I remember The Throne was in there. Certain companies that could afford that $50,000 tax to get into the UFC and be approved to wear their logo, to have fighters wear their logos, they were only the ones that were in the octagon. Now this made a lot of sense for the UFC because they had the main platform they were providing for these fighters and these companies to get exposure. So UFC wanted to get paid in the middle of that. And it also made sense for the fighters as well because they would get paid if the company or brand that was approved could afford to get into the UFC and afford to pay the fighter as well. So it worked out for, for both. The fighters got extra money, the UFC got paid, and then the company also got their marketing and their exposure. Now fast forward to 2014, and the MMA game changed again. This is when the whole Reebok situation came into the UFC. Basically what happened is Reebok signed a million dollar deal with the UFC, and now they were the only sponsor that could be held in the octagon by the fighters. And that was it. So this kind of changed the game because fighters, that's all they could wear, and there was a tier pay set up by Reebok in the UFC. Depending on how many fights you've had in the UFC, it went from like zero to five fights, five to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, and the more fights you had in the UFC, the more money you were paid via Reebok. 
So in some cases, this was good. You know, you would have fighters that would only be making $1,000 in sponsors, and now they're getting paid, you know, $2,500, five grand. So their money went up. But then also there was there's other fighters like myself who were making ten, fifteen plus thousand dollars per fight, depending on where the card was. And now my pay would go down because I was in a five thousand dollar Reebok sponsorship. So that was kind of how the game changed. There was no more J list, you know, uh, clothing companies getting in. It was basically one outfit per the UFC, and that was it. Nobody else. Now throughout this time, Bellator has kind of kept an open door policy with sponsorships. There isn't any tax to get into Bellator. There isn't one big clothing company like uh, Venom nowadays is with UFC. And with Bellator, it's pretty open and it's pretty free. And I thought, what a better day than to discuss what my actual numbers were when I fought in Bellator. Now, my fight with Benson Henderson was a main event in Dublin, Ireland. Now, there was two main events that day, meaning, which this was kind of different for me, it was basically like a European main event which was James Gallagher versus somebody. And then there was uh, my main event with Benson Henderson. So they were kind of running these cards simultaneously. And it was pretty cool because there was more fights for the fans. Now, when it came down to it, this was my first experience in Bellator with sponsorships. So it was actually cool to be able to go and talk to people that possibly would want to sponsor me and kind of not be locked into any certain tier or any type of rule set when it came to sponsors. I could basically go out free market, my managers did the same, and I was kind of pretty excited to do this because I was thinking I was gonna make some good money. Now before we get into the actual numbers for this fight, drop a comment below and let me know what you think I'm gonna make for this main event in Bellator. Do you think it's $1,000? Do you think maybe it's five, 10? Do you think it's 100 or maybe $1 million? Let me know drop a comment below. And if you haven't already, guys, make sure to just hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button. It just definitely helps out the channel a lot. Now, one sponsor in this fight paid me $2,500 and another sponsor paid me $5,000. This was basically for logos on my shorts, shirt. This was also a logos on the banner, some social media posts. And outside of that, I also had the fight shorts, which they paid me $1,000 to wear them. Now that was Venom, who's now the main outfit provider for the UFC. So total all in from sponsors for this fight, I made $8,500. And now to me, this was a little short than what I thought it was going to be. This is just my experience on it. I'm super grateful for all my sponsors and I'm grateful for the opportunity and the money that I made. But for me, I just thought for being main event and being on Bellator, there would be a lot more opportunity. And from my experience, it just didn't live up to the expectations that I set before I got into Bellator. Now, this is a new platform for me. I didn't know much about it. And I think what it comes down to is the numbers, meaning how many views each card gets. Bellator gets hundreds of thousands of views. And I think depending on the views for each card and the platform, that the pay is structured by that for the sponsors. So I know maybe with different cards, if you get hundreds of thousands or 500, a million views, you're gonna get paid more compared to just 100,000 or a couple hundred thousand views. So that's kind of my take on it. This fight was on Paramount and DAZN and the time that it was, it was on might have had some effect with it. And now I'm looking forward though, because the future, Bellator's on CBS, and I'm wondering, and I'm gonna see if the opportunities to have better money for sponsor will be there. I'm super grateful for it. I will definitely keep you guys in tune with what the sponsorship's money looking like for Bellator being on CBS now. I'm also gonna hopefully be dropping a video on how much money I made fight-wise in my, my scrap with Benson Henderson. Still trying to work out the details with that. Uh, stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for sticking all the way through with this video. And make sure to drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I'm also available for a one hour, one-on-one -on -one coaching call. The link is in the description. So if you wanna talk about fighting, sponsors, uh, training, maybe real estate, maybe investing, personal finance, make sure to just hit that link below, sign up, and we can schedule something. As always, thank you, and until next time.